everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to take a more in-depth look at the new Paradise Fibers Acid Dye Collection. This is a collection of 13 different acid dye colors and I'm excited to do some crude swatches and see how they perform and give my overall opinion on these dyes. I am a Paradise Fibers affiliate marketer, which means I do have an affiliate link and I earn commissions on purchases made through my link. And Paradise Fibers did send me these dyes for free to review when I reached out and asked if I could have some more of them. So they were very generous. They also actually sent me a lot of fiber that is extremely gorgeous and I am excited to dye up more in videos going forward this year. I have already used these dyes once. They gave little samples in one of their Fiber of the Month Club packages. So in my ice dyeing video, I did have my very first look at these dyes, but I'm excited to do um, a more official look and review. Today, I'm primarily gonna focus on dyeing some superwash sock yarn because this is the type of fiber that I dye the most. And I picked one that I'm very, very familiar with, so that way I can give an impression of how these dyes perform with, say, Dharma, Jacquard, and greener shades that I've tested in the past. But I will also have some videos coming up soon of me dyeing some unspun fiber with these dyes and giving my thoughts there as well. So please make sure you are subscribed and have your notifications turned on so you don't miss a new video. The Paradise Fibers Acid Dye Collection is a range of 13 colors. And I have to say that for a small range of colors, I am very happy with this range. So for me, if I was only gonna get, say, six colors of acid dye to start with, I would pick a magenta, turquoise, yellow, a red, a blue, and a black. After that, my next choice would be to go for, say, probably a brown and a gray. And then I think probably towards the end, the things I would want might be our secondary colors, uh, a navy, but then the soft yellow is a really great choice. If you've watched any of my color mixing videos, yellow gets overtaken by other colors really, really easy. So creating a less bright yellow when you're mixing colors can be a little bit harder to do without it maybe going a little too orange or too brown or too green. And so, I think of these colors, I am extremely excited to see what that soft yellow looks like. Now the three colors that I have played with already are the turquoise, magenta, and yellow from the ice dyeing video that I mentioned. And the turquoise is one where uh, if you use too much of it, it will bleed and bleed and bleed and bleed. So that is something to be aware of, but is something that is very common with turquoise pigments in general, whether you're talking about acid dyes or fiber reactive dyes even, it is just a tricky color. The dyes arrived a double bag. So each dye is in a little Ziploc bag and they were all inside a larger plastic garbage bag. Um, I think that the containers, that's a like a squishable type plastic, but I like very much that they're clear so it's very easy to see how much dye is left in them and also to visually see the color of the dye, which does help. But they are labeled very, very clearly twice with the color, which is also very handy. And I have 100 grams of each of these colors. This is gonna go a very, very long way, considering that I very frequently use a 1% depth of shade, which is one gram of dye per 100 grams of yarn. So, this is a lot of dye. <laughs> Let's take a quick look at the website and talk about the cost of the dyes. So, as we said, there are 13 different colors, and these dyes are $8 for 10 grams, or uh, $44 for 100 grams. 100 grams is approximately four ounces. And so these Paradise Fibers acid dyes are expensive when compared to Jacquard and Dharma. For example, Jacquard acid dyes through Dharma Trading Company are $345 for a half ounce. And so if you were to extrapolate that price, it would be $27 
but for four ounces. But eight ounces of the dye is just $9. And if you take a look at the Dharma Acid dyes, there they have the prices that vary with the color. And the most expensive one is Electric Violet, which is currently $9.25 for two ounces or $30 for eight ounces. So I don't know what makes the Paradise Fibers acid dyes more expensive than some of these other brands that I use a lot. Um, besides the fact that they're potentially creating smaller batches of these dyes and therefore the costs are higher. But I'm really excited to see how these perform so then we know a little bit more about it. On their website, they do have uh, some details on how to dye the yarn, some safety instructions, um, which similar to other acid dyes, you want to make sure that you're wearing proper safety equipment. You want to use respirators, safety glasses and gloves whenever you're dealing with dye powder and you want to keep the powders away from kids and pets. I pre-soaked some Knit Picks Hawthorne Fingering Weight Yarn, which is 80% fine Peruvian Highland wool, 20% polyamid, uh, to do this first look because I can compare this easily to say the Greener Shades review that I did. And I've pre-soaked this yarn in just some plain tap water for a couple of hours. In my four inch deep catering steam pan, I have added 200 grams of the Knit Picks Hawthorne yarn, uh, two tablespoons of white vinegar, and six cups of water. And this is what we are gonna use for this crude swatching, adding some dry powder on to this yarn so that way we can get a feel of how the hues compare and how pigmented the various colors are. All of the tools that I'm using are dedicated for dyeing yarn and are never used for the preparation of food. And when we are dealing with the dry dye powder, I will be wearing a respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves. The pan is on my stove over two burners, and I have just turned it on to medium heat to start heating things up. And then I will reduce the heat so it's not super steamy so we can add the dye. I am going to reduce the heat to low. And now we're going to start adding the colors. And I want to start with violet. So I'm taking a tiny bit of color, sort of sprinkling it on, setting the dye down. And I don't immediately see breaking, but woo! This is a nice, bright purple. I don't think it is, goodness, I'm gonna have to look at my purple chart to see what I think it is com comparable to, but it is a beautiful, beautiful color. I did not immediately observe any breaking though. Next up is magenta, which is one of the colors I've done already. And this dye feels a lot, almost drier, is the way I would describe it. Um, the, the powder is very like sand-like and that was a lot of dye. It is very, very pigmented, very pigmented, very pink, which makes sense. Okay, next up is red, which the powder also feels like fairly fine and non-clumped. Uh, it's a slightly different texture to what I am used to. Uh, with some other dyes, which is pretty cool. The purple felt like other dyes, but these these two feel a little bit drier. I'm not sure if that word makes sense, but the it feels like it would speckle really, really well. So this feels like a nice warm red. I think it is like, it's got some more orange undertones versus being a blue red, which given that we have a magenta in this collection, I think is a good thing. Next up is the orange, and this, this dye, I don't know if you can tell, this one is a bit more whoop, clumped than the others, so it, it sort of, it wasn't as gritty necessarily. Uh, that is a very, very nice bright orange. Here is the yellow, whoop, which I put all in one spot. This is one of the colors that I did use with the ice dyeing and is 
a wonderful yellow. It is a very nice uh, bright yellow, which I think is good for a primary. I have not yet observed any color breaking. But if we're gonna see, so I'm gonna need to go smaller with these colors. Okay, this one is a little bit clumped. If we're gonna see some breaking, it wouldn't surprise me. Ooh, if we see some. Okay, so the soft yellow, which is fairly concentrated where I've added it. It does kind of spread out to be a softer yellow, but it looks, it reminds me a bit of Aztec gold a little bit, or like honey mustard would be, those are two ways that I might classify that yellow. But as I mentioned, I think that that would be a really nice color to have for some color mixing. Whoa, the green is like really fine. It's like picking it up. I hope that doesn't mean that it would um, clump. Okay, so the green is very teal. Uh, not the color I was expecting at all. I would say of all the ones I've tried this far, this one is a big surprise to me. Um, because I think that the image, the image had it looking very, very green. And that is way more blue to me. So this is the green I see. That's the kind of green that they have on their website. So I don't know if it needs more mixing. And so I got some of the blue pigments in there or what, but that color is the first one that doesn't feel true to what I've seen advertised. At least the primaries so far are pretty good. But speaking of primaries, now we've got the turquoise. And I know from experience, I want to use a tiny, that was not a tiny amount. Oh dear, look at how pigmented this color is. Um, this color is so bright. It is a beautiful blue. And I think this is the kind of color that with greener shades, I wish that they had in their collection. But to be fair, I think the Paradise Fibers dyes are more comparable to say like Dharma Acid dyes than they are to greener shades. Okay, here is the blue. You can see how like easy, like you can tell which colors are a bit finer based on like how they pour out. This has got stunning pigmentation. It's a very, very beautiful color. Um, I really, really am happy with that blue. So yeah, officially I can say the primaries look great. Okay, next up is navy. which looks very navy. <laughs> uh, and it's nice because like more diluted, it is a softer blue, which is also something that would be nice to have in a collection. Okay, here is black. Okay, and this is looking quite black. <laughs> quite black, which one would expect and the pot is warm but I mean we'll have to try speckling some of these colors and that I plan to do some speckling with some of these colors but I am surprised that I have not seen breaking yet okay gray and I have a fair amount of the dye okay so gray the gray is blue toned and I added a lot that is very pigmented um, and it gives a beautiful like bluish gray. So it's not, I wouldn't call it a silver gray. It is more gray than the navy, but maybe it reminds me a little bit of a blue steel. Finally, the brown. That is a really nice like chocolate brown color. Very, very nice. Yeah, I think it's a really nice collection. Now, the one thing I'll say is that these containers aren't the sturdiest. So when you're sealing them back up, uh, I would be careful and I'm probably gonna put them back in the Ziploc bags. I do feel like I'd be able to reach in for speckling, but that is something we will test out shortly. Now, 
it's been maybe 10 minutes or so and I'm gonna raise the heat a bit but I'm curious okay the purple has struck we've still got magenta there not surprised a hint of red still some orange I'm not surprised that we're gonna have some of the colors here this gray is really nice I really like the the blue quality to it um, so I just increased the temperature right now and I am going to leave this here for I would say 10 minutes to give colors time to set. I am very nervous about this blue. <laughs> very nervous about this blue. But after those 10 minutes we will come and see what colors have struck, which ones haven't, and then probably add some water, move the yarn, and potentially add more color to these uh, swatch stains. Okay, it has been 10 minutes. I still got some color there. The orange is looking pretty cleared. The red. The fuchsia is looking not so bad. Oh, the turquoise is looking clear. Okay, I would say most of these, there's a little bit of black. A little tiny bit of some of those other colors. All right, I'm gonna come get more water. Here is another six cups of water, which now our yarn is really floating. And so we might start seeing some tendrils of dye move around. Let's add three tablespoons of white vinegar. Um, if there is unbound dye, I see some yellow moving around that might shift what some of these colors are doing. Um, which is okay. So I think what I'm gonna do is leave this for another 10 minutes, and then we'll flip the yarn and decide if I wanna add more color to it. I do think that I want to investigate, obviously the green, and a couple of the other colors. I'm curious about speckling with the purple, the black, and the gray, and maybe I'll add the green to that mix. Um, just to see if I observe any color breaking. But otherwise, uh, yeah, I will come back in about 10 minutes and we'll flip the yarn. Okay, let's flip this over. Let's see, yeah, we got some good color penetration here. So I'm really nice. I'm not sure how balanced the yarn will feel. Like there's this whole, uh, area in there but I also think that it is like pretty. I'm tempted to just leave these as they are as like unique um, one-of-a-kind swatches. The only thing no there's color on there it just might be a little asymmetric um, in the colors that are on each one but I think that that'll just make them that much more unique. So I'm gonna let this heat for another uh, 10 minutes. It does look like all of the color has absorbed, which is great. And then we will set up to do two other projects with these dies. I'm now going to turn off the heat and we are gonna remove the yarn. So because I don't see any turquoise behind in the water and it is still hot, I'm feeling a little optimistic that I'm not gonna experience the same bleeding that I had with our yarn mop from the ice dyeing, which both took the yarn that was not set um, from that project and then I did heat set it and it did absorb when it cooled completely, but when things were hot, the dye came back out. So I'm trying to be very optimistic and I may need to remove some liquid here, but we may just use the same bath for the speckling. With my safety equipment on, I measured out two grams of the green acid dye, making sure to try to stir up the container a little bit, just in case that one swatch I took was a little bit unmixed. Maybe there was some more yellow pigment in there somewhere to make this more of a true green versus feeling so teal. But as I started adding hot tap water, it does still feel really, really blue to me as opposed to being a Kelly emerald type green. 
that was more of what I was expecting. I took the two grams of dye and added it to a stainless steel dye pot that had 16 cups of water and two tablespoons of white vinegar. This is less acid than I used for the original swatching, but I just wanna see if all the color will absorb or if we'll need to add more acid. So it's sort of a secondary test. I then added 200 grams of the pre-soaked Hawthorne yarn and dipped it into the bath so that way it would be well distributed. And then I moved it over to the stove to heat for about 30 minutes on medium heat. I'll reduce the temperature if it starts boiling, but I want to see if in that time the color will absorb or what we can really see with this green. It has been 30 minutes and I did reduce the heat once things got pretty uh, bubbly, but I would say just about all of this color has absorbed which is good and we didn't have that much acid either. I am going to go ahead and add I think just like three tablespoons of white vinegar just for good measure uh, but this color seems very very well set and I am going to turn off the heat let it cool for a bit here in the pot because it's going to stay nice and warm and then once it cools we can go ahead and wash it but as you can see we've got a beautiful teal but it is a teal and this is the same dye bath we used for swatching and I'm going to add 200 grams of the Knit Picks Hawthorne and add it in spread it out a bit I would like there to be a little bit less liquid, so I'm gonna go ahead and use a turkey baster to help remove some of the liquid, which is a fairly slow process, but <laughs> we'll, then be, we'll then be able to have some of this liquid that we can reuse uh, later on. I removed about two cups of liquid in total. And so now we still have a lot of water in here, but more if the yarn is at or above the surface, which will help for speckling. Now, my gloves are wet right now. I'm gonna want them to be completely dry before I start speckling on here. Because I am going to be into the dye containers and then uh, speckling onto the yarn, I'm gonna have dye on my fingertips, so I'm gonna pre-soak a skein of Knit Picks Swish DK in some water with vinegar, um, and then I will use this to wipe my hands onto while we are doing the speckling. Okay, it's time to start speckling. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of the black acid dye and lightly, and some of it, it's sort of a slightly different texture slash consistency, and maybe I picked up a little too much so these aren't like as fine as I can do, as I know I can do with speckling. So the water level also isn't as low as it could be. <laughs> so I guess those are two things that right off the bat are not the most in my favor. Uh, but let's see. I mean, I'm seeing, okay, I think I see one spot of yellow right there. Uh, which I'll keep an eye out for more. It could be maybe some on the outside edge or something. So I'm not, I'm reserving judgment. Um, but let's look at our violet next. And the violet definitely has a little bit of a thicker consistency. Okay, I'm doing better about like lightly letting it fall. Some of these areas are a little bit more clumped. I also, I could should have made the water a bit lower even, but these are looking like very purple speckles to me. And in that purple, I am just seeing purple. I'm not seeing red and blue. Okay, next up is the gray, which I believe is a fine, yeah, it's one of the fine dyes. So the dye because it's so fine, falls easily. And I'm feeling, it's funny, because I speckle a lot, 
but I'm feeling a little bit clumsy uh, with these colors, if that is making sense. Uh, I'm going to need to give this, I think, another shot at some point. This gray is so pigmented. I love it. I really love it. Like, a lot of times I think of other grays when I come over to the yarn mop and wipe my hand onto it. The color there doesn't feel quite as pigmented, but these, like, these guys feel like there is pigment in there, and so that makes me really, really happy. Uh, now, the gray specks do feel different to me, and I don't know if it's just because of the spread. They do feel different than the gray, or sorry, than the black. And I think up here on camera you can feel that too. These are very much, much more cool toned, more blue than the black, which is nice because that gives us like two different grays. But I'm not seeing breaking here. The only evidence of breaking that I've seen is potentially one yellow and so you can see that like right up there. And so to be fair, a rogue yellow speckle is something that could be very, very frustrating for people. Um, but at the same time, that's not that bad. There are some, I think Jacquard Jet Black has a lot more like yellow and red in it. And you see more of those colors pop out versus the occasional like random single dot, which may be a fluke. We have a fair amount of spread from these colors, which to be fair, this was not the lowest immersion that I could have gone, and I didn't mix the dyes with citric acid, but I wanted to see how fast it could strike. And there is the potential for getting beautiful, sharp speckles with this. I think with less water and maybe some citric acid, that could work really well. Like up in this corner right here, we can see some nice sharp specks that don't have the like comet tails of some of the spread. I still want to let this sit for 10 minutes and then we'll check and see how well these colors have struck. Um, our yarn mop is looking incredibly pigmented. I did leave a lot of liquid in here, um, so we're getting a fair amount of spread of the dyes. Um, but and I will be using this more. We're obviously going to speckle some more. Um, so I think that, yeah, I, I'm very, very happy with these results that we are getting. I think that uh, the spread we're seeing is based on the conditions I set it up in, but I think that it does have the potential to do some beautiful speckles. You, I just have to get used to uh, the handedness of it. Um, so something about how fine it is means that I didn't get as like even, it wasn't as even as maybe I do sometimes, but again, that can be remedied by mixing them with some citric acid to dilute it a little bit and make it easier to spread. The jars are a great size for my fingers to fit in. That is going well. The colors are really pigmented and I really like that. Uh, again, I think not getting sharp speckles is more from, I don't know, user error because I like the kind of speckles I'm getting, but uh, I think mixed with citric acid, we would have an opportunity for getting some sharper speckles. Okay, let's flip the yarn and we have a fair amount of spread, which is not surprising given that we saw spread on the top. But I am going to go ahead and speed things up and start speckling this more. This time I'm not going to stick to the various areas. I am going to add all three of the colors all over a bit. Then I will wait probably about 10 minutes before opening up the skein and moving it around again and adding another layer of color. And I will repeat that until I am satisfied with the coverage of color that we have on our yarn. I will add, I didn't notice any more yellow specks appearing from the black, and I'm really glad that the black and the gray feel so different with speckles. That's really, really exciting for me, because a lot of times grays look very, very, very similar to black. Uh, so I'm very happy with this. I love the way the colorway is coming together. The speckles are really, really fun. I think that the purple is feeling more, it is reminding me more of electric violet now, especially in combination with the black. I think on camera it looks a little bit more pink, 
but I am a huge fan of this purple. And I, I don't think electric violet, now that I think about it, I don't think that breaks. Um, I'm a huge fan of the purple. I imagine I will be using that a lot. I love the gray as well. Now that I've layered them all so much, it's a little hard to tell the difference between the gray and the black. So I'm really curious to see if I will notice that once the yarn is dry. But now I want to come and add, that's just a little bit of plain water. And I'm adding back some of this liquid that was in there before. And I'm even gonna come and add more liquid that was from a dye pot just to help uh, everything that hasn't dissolved dissolve and bind. I think that there was a little bit of dye that I added towards that other end um, that wasn't on top of yarn and actually there might be a little dye around the edges that is now rinsing off and so now our yarn can absorb that. So I am going to heat this for 30 minutes. I'll turn off the heat, remove the yarn to cool, and then we will set our yarn off. I let the yarn cool off for a bit here in the pan, but the pan is still definitely warm. Ooh, I love that because of the spread, we have ended up with this like pastel gray with all these speckles on top. It is so fun. I definitely ended up going like heavier and stuff versus trying to keep some of that light. But I feel like that was a choice I made when we did not have, um, when I didn't reduce the water even more. But now here is our yarn mop stain. And I imagine that a lot of the color is already pretty well set. Um, or I mean has struck. Not necessarily well set, but a lot of the color isn't coming off of where this yarn is. I think there was enough acid in the yarn that the colors did sort of absorb pretty quickly. But I do want to heat it for 30 minutes in the stained dye bath, just so that way we can make sure that that little bit of heat makes sure things are nicely well set. Doesn't ever hurt. Um, and yeah, I always like to make sure to heat things. Uh, we could have steam set it, but since I have this here, may as well heat it here. So I am going to heat it for 30 minutes, turn off the heat, let it cool, but that'll all be off camera. And now we can go wash some yarn. Let's wash our quote green with our wash colors. We will go ahead and wash the yarn mop probably with the speckled yarn in a bit. I'm gonna add some clear dish soap here to the basin. And I am feeling very optimistic because all of the color absorbed while the yarn was still hot, I am not anticipating seeing any bleeding, which means that yay turquoise, and I'm not seeing any color come out. Oh my goodness, that makes me so happy. <laughs> So, so happy. Uh, again, turquoise and bright pink can sometimes be a little bit uh, tricky. If you use too much, then they just will kind of keep coming out. <laughs> but it looks like all of these colors are doing really well. And I think that they are so pigmented. Like this 1% depth of shade, it's not a green but it is a great amount of pigmentation. And so for that, I am happy. But I am gonna go put this through, I'll rinse it probably one more time, and then I'm gonna put it through my spin dryer uh, to remove most of the liquid, hang it to dry, and we'll come back and wash the speckled yarn and yarn mop. Let's wash our yarn mop and speckled colorway which right now are blending super nicely together. I'm gonna add a little bit of dish soap. I am not expecting to see any bleeding here. I didn't use colors that uh, I would think could be a bleeding look, so hopefully <laughs> things will be good. I mean, the dyes are performing beautifully. I love this purple and I know I'm not seeing any bleeding. I know I'm gonna use this purple 
a lot. But yeah, this looks great. So I am going to go ahead and put this through my spin dryer as well, but we've got beautiful little subtle speckles. Uh, I imagine with less water that we could have had something sharper and maintained more white, but that ultimately wasn't really what I went for. So, um, and the big question was, would these colors break with speckling? And no, not really. Maybe one rogue yellow speckle out of the whole thing. So, <laughs> anyway, let's look at the finished dry yarn. The colors are all very pigmented, and I think it is a great range for 13 colors, with the exception of that green. And I'll talk more about the green in a moment. It is a beautiful teal color, but the collection is very much missing a green, and I'm not entirely sure why there isn't one. But I think in a video coming up, I want to play with these colors on some fiber and I'm going to try to mix up some of my own green uh, based on the colors available here and there are many choices for that. From these crude swatches we also saw that none of the colors appeared to break which was also rather uh, cool and impressive to me uh, because a lot of I mean, not necessarily all these colors break, but I guess because I play with so many Dharma acid dyes that aren't primary colors, that are mixtures, a lot of the purples break with speckles. There's just a lot of colors I use that do break. So having a whole collection of colors that don't really seem to break is exciting and makes this whole collection feel a lot simpler and easier to manage. This is a 1% depth of shade of that green color. It is super saturated, but I wouldn't really call it a green. I would call it a teal. Uh, it definitely is more green than the other blues in the collection, but it is not... It, it feels like the missing link. Now, if this were in the collection and there was a separate green, then th that would this would fit in well. It wouldn't feel super out of place to have it necessarily, but uh, yeah, I was just really surprised, especially given the color on this little sheet that they gave me. I was expecting a green that felt more green versus this teal, because I think just about every other color that they showed feels very, very true. I mean, on here with the printing, the magenta is definitely more pink in person than it really looks there, but the color feels magenta, and this color just doesn't feel green to me. But putting that aside, uh, the dye absorbed very evenly here onto the yarn. I don't know if it tends to absorb a little bit slower than other dyes for sure yet, because my speckles that I did, and I'll show those in a moment, weren't a quote proper low immersion. There was a bit of water present, which did allow for some spread. We clearly do not have a white base color here. It is a gray. And the purples definitely spread out a ton. I was speckling with the straight dye powder. I did not dilute it with citric acid at all. And the dyes feel very, very finely milled. Um, and in some cases, they don't really clump together very easily. So for someone who prefers to speckle with their fingertips, uh, it wasn't bad or anything. It just was different. <laughs> and so I think with some practice, I would get more used to using them, which would improve getting sharp speckles. But I do love this colorway. And even the yarn mop we created is really, really lovely. I mean, this purple is a really good purple, a really, really good purple. Are there any other techniques you specifically want to see me explore with these dyes? Otherwise, besides the uh, mixing a green and uh, playing with some of the roving they sent me, I'm probably going to mix these into my arsenal of tools to use going forward.
let's talk about the pros and cons of the Paradise Fibers Acid Dyes. For pros, there is a good range of color in this small 13 color collection. The colors are extremely pigmented, which means that they're going to go really, really far. And the colors don't appear to break with speckling. Now, Breaking with speckling can be something that is really, really fun, but sometimes when you are going to speckle or use a dye powder, you want the color to be the color you expect. So having a collection of colors you know don't break is really handy. For the cons, well, there's the green. <laughs> I would say this is a minor con, but the green is really more of a teal. That wasn't quite what I expected, but I do think that we should be able to mix a good green with the multiple yellows and blues that we have in the collection. But the biggest con of this collection is the price. These acid dyes are really expensive, especially when compared to other lines. And unfortunately, the cost alone is probably the reason why I might not personally order these again, even though I really like using them. I really have no idea why the cost is so high, but I will say that if these arrive in another Fiber of the Month Club package, I will be so happy to use them. They perform really, really well, uh, I think. And from using them in an unreleased upcoming video, uh, they seem to strike a little bit slower than some of my other acid dyes. And I actually really, really like this because when using a dry powder application, it means that the dyes spread a little more and therefore I don't have to do quite as many flips and applications and I still get a really vibrant color. So I'm really enjoying them. The one other thing I do want to mention is because these powders are so fine, I did find more powder spread on my protected work surface than I sometimes see with other dyes. I kept checking the floor and there was no, there were no dyed particles on my floor in between like the counter and the stove where I would carry the jars back and forth. And so for that, I, that is always a win for me. So will I use these dyes again? Absolutely. I have a lot of them and I really have enjoyed working with them thus far and so I'm very excited to have them in my collection. Once again, I do want to disclose I am a Paradise Fibers affiliate, uh, but this video is not sponsored. Uh, I reached out to Paradise Fibers to ask if they would send me some samples of these dyes so I could review the collection. And so while I think these acid dyes are a little bit too expensive, what I can wholeheartedly recommend are the beautiful unspun fibers that Paradise Fibers offers, both as part of their Fiber of the Month Club and just in general on their website. I have loved everything I've received from them that I've spun and dyed, and I'm very excited to do more. So if you'd like to learn more, I do have my affiliate link down in the video description. I am running out of space to store acid dyes, but if there are any other brands that you would like me to review, please let me know down in the comments below and I will consider it. Also, please comment with any other techniques you would like to see me do with these dyes. As I mentioned, I do have a video that will come up at some point that features these dyes again and I plan I think one of the next things I want to do with them is to try to mix some greens since that's the color I found to be missing from the collection. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching.